Hi, Santosh. Good Hi. morning. Good morning. Uh, I just reviewed a CV. It's look really good. Uh, could you please tell about yourself? Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Sure. Uh, my name is uh, no, Santosh. I'm working in HCL Technologies right now. Overall, I have around uh, seven to yeah seven and a half years of experience. Uh, so I'm mostly involving into you know uh, Azure and GCP and uh, AWS uh, since in our environment, right? We use multi cloud. Also, we have on premises uh, since there are dedicated team taking care of the on premises environment. Uh, addition to that, uh, across all these three cloud platforms, right, we have automated uh, things and stuff uh, through, uh, you know, uh, DevOps uh, environment, totally, okay. Uh, mostly, we won't go for any manual uh, attentions, everything, you know, automated and things are kept in place. Uh, example, we use Ansible uh, for any kind of configuration management things, right, we done it through Ansible. And uh, we have a uh, Jenkins as a pipeline tool. Also, slowly we are uh, integrating uh, GitLab as well. Okay, so for these couple of tools, right, we are using um, uh, for CI/CD. Uh, meantime, GitLab completely get into it. Earlier, we use uh, uh, GitHub as for you know version control. Uh, we have a Terraform in place, and we have a uh, you know mostly all these environment right build it through Terraform only. We manage state file for each and every uh, activities. Uh, we have, you know, client that they are based upon, you know, a news land. Uh, so, uh, so right now, right, uh, I'm, I'm having relevant experience on the same project, close to 3.5 years of, you uh, know, experience that is same project, same relevant project. Uh, so to enhance my career, right, I'm looking for a new opportunity. Ma so this is what basically all about uh, uh, in the perspective of, uh, you know, self uh, intro part. Okay, Santosh, let's move on the questions. Mm -hmm. My first question is, is Terraform usable for an on-prem infrastructure? Mm, yeah, of course. Why not? So some set of feature, right? See, to be honest, I never worked into on-premises. Uh, there are dedicated hardware uh, team and data center management teams available. But I heard uh, Terraform not only for cloud and other uh, things, it also has some uh, modules and there are some uh, set of features, right? Still, we can run it through Terraform when it come to on-premises. Okay. Uh, even people uh, almost, yeah, now today everything becoming cloud. Uh, apart from that, right, when you focus, Terraform also is applicable to do any sort of, uh, not any sort of, few sort of uh, automations, even can be done in on-premises physical data center as well. Okay. We have a scope. Okay. Uh, does Terraform support multi-provided deployments? Do please explain. Uh, uh, Terraform multi-provided deployments. Can you come again? Your question, please. Okay, I'll repeat. Mm -hmm. Does Terraform support multi-provided deployments? Yeah, correct. Yeah, of course. Uh, so basically, right, the many inbuilt, I see, if you take Azure, we have Azure ARM, resource manager, uh, uh, infrastructure, so code, inbuilt uh, tool available. Where if you go this one, right, I mean, um, uh, AWS, we have a cloud formation, which has inbuilt infrastructure, so code. Uh, the, the main reason why we are going with the Terraform kind of tool, even though the individual cloud providers has uh, its own uh, infrastructure, so code is, uh, since uh, cloud formation only supports AWS, uh, Azure AR only supports Azure in terms of you know building the infrastructures. Where if you come to Terraform, right, which has a possibility and advantage of using a multi-provider deployments actually. Okay, even I told you initially, you know, before starting this conversation, we work in the environment where we have a multiple cloud in place, right? Uh, mainly, uh, we are using three uh, cloud platforms. Uh, the main reason um, we use Terraform is all about um, uh, whatever the um, um, uh, resources we are creating in the infrastructure and platform, right? Uh, the single Terraform code is enough. Uh, we would be able to manage, you know, AWS, Azure, GCP, all those things are uh, possible. So in that case, right, uh, definitely Terraform supports multi-provider uh, deployment. Uh, there is no doubt in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, name all version controls supported by Terraform. Could you please explain? Uh, yeah. So basically, version control, yeah, that is what I simple. I know. Mm, uh, basically, we will have a uh, Git, uh, we, GitHub uh, we use for storing our source code. Uh, also, uh, other supported thing means we can say Bitbucket, we can say, and uh, Cloud, uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, GitLab, we can say. Okay, these are the platforms and places where I can have a 
version control uh, uh supported by uh, terraform okay his gen as like uh, general normal source code only how we have a you know python code or any jenkins pipeline code whatever same way i can even have a uh, terraform also uh, i can put it in the respective uh, uh, source code repository uh, where it will get it you no know, managed the respective version control uh, items and features okay santosh so which command destroys uh, terraform managed infrastructure uh yeah uh, terraform uh, destroy command uh, as soon as i execute the terraform destroy command right what it does uh, it definitely it will go and look into the state file what are the resources are you know being managed by terraform the things to be noticed here if the resource is created and managed by terraform then we can go for destroying it we cannot you know destroy the resource which is not been managed by uh, terraform okay so whatever the resources is pointing out in the same directory in the state file uh, that can be destroyed if the resource is not having any dependency okay uh, so the command used is for uh, terraform destroy and the uh, respective thing will get destroyed okay what are the components of terraform architecture uh, okay uh, basically when you take a terraform right it's only really, uh, a bigger tool but definitely it's uh, easy to understand uh, we know that uh, anyway Mm-hmm. the component uh, in the sense we have a provider we will start from provider okay provider portion is all for um, which uh, cloud exactly we are writing our code uh, say for an example if i'm writing code for aws the provider should be aws if i'm writing code for uh, you know gcp the co- provider should be gcp so that way uh, when you initialize right the respective plugin it will get downloaded based on the resource as well as this provider okay is the first component uh, after that we have you know uh, resource uh, component uh, throughout uh, terraform whenever you go for creating any new resource uh, the resource component play a major role uh, in fact i can tell you this is one of the mandatory component also uh, without a resource component you won't be able to create any sort of resources i mean that is another uh, plus point mm, so apart from that uh, we have a, a variable component uh, mainly right uh, when in the uh when in the uh, basic uh, uh, terraform we don't want to hard code any component okay in that case we will use a variable uh, so whatever the value i am passing it to variable dot tf file right that will get it uh, okay passed to main dot uh, tf file okay so apart from that we have output uh, component is there whenever a terraform code is getting executed the value will be passed to output and state file is there whenever it creates any resource management so the information are being captured uh, in the uh, state file okay so like that uh, the modularization is there okay like how many things are there local is there uh, so graph okay uh, all those things right which is part of my terraform uh, Uh, components uh, architecture i would say okay how to store sensitive data in terraform how to store sensitive, sensitive data in terraform um yeah so uh, some information right in variable file we can pass through in plain text but not for all I yeah, suppose I um, wanted to pass any confidential data or sensitive data as you said. Uh, we can use default, uh, you know. We can use default. Uh, um, uh, Terraform itself providing uh, there is a vault. Okay, we can put the sensitive content in that. It will encrypt it immediately. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, that is one way of you know a kind of password, kind of you know security keys. kind of any certificates uh, these kind of items right uh, recommended to uh, put it in the uh, uh, terraform vault kind of uh, place where it will be very much secured we can refer that value in the source code now, apart from that if you play with any other sensitive data uh, we can use encryption uh, suppose you are having uh, you are uh, you are using your data in cloud and all uh, cloud nowadays providing uh, kms or uh, azure key managed uh, services right where we can encrypt it using kms key or azure key services all right so using the advanced uh, you know encryption algorithm it get encrypted when anonymous user trying to access the data they won't be able to access it so uh, these are the way right uh, we need to be very much crucial in handling the sensitive data not only terraform uh, general way okay but in respect to terraform these are the feasible way uh, 
to coordinate our uh, sensitive data map. Okay, Santosh, could you please explain about state file locking? So state file locking, we could say this is sometime it could be a feature or sometime it could be a problem. Uh, so it depends on the person's uh, perceptions uh, who you know facing that issues. Uh, basically, uh, state file locking, first of all, why state file lock error comes? Sometime when you go for Terraform apply, right? When multiple users, uh, there are user A and user B, both of them working in different place, but they are trying to access the same code, trying to do the same deployment. In order to protect the duplication of resource creation, uh, we have an option for uh, state state file locking. Okay, so sometimes Terraform itself will enable that state file locking. Uh, so where when you give for a Terraform apply and all, it will end up with the error says state file locking. Uh, this will enable like that will get the error. So this could be you know even manually also can be locked at uh, to basically you know to avoid the resource duplication only. Uh, people who are unaware about the state file lock, right? He'll report the issue says, oh, my code is not working, it's throw some error like that. The person who really knows about state file locking, he knows that, okay, this is one of the feature, and if state file lock uh, error come, this is the solution to be fixed it up. Okay, likewise, we can uh, work on it, we can sort it, uh, sort that issue. Okay, this is uh, one of the, you know, uh, option, uh, feature, and uh, issue, uh, we can say, state file locking in Terraform. Okay. Uh, could you please explain about Terraform provider? Terraform provider is simple, right? So whenever we deal with any cloud environments, we have a Terraform uh, uh, provider play a major role. Okay. Uh, the respect to region also will provide in the Terraform uh, provider actually. Uh, mostly, right? When I have a uh, AWS cloud. Okay. Imagine I'm trying to develop a uh, Terraform code for AWS uh, cloud environment. I'll specify AWS as my provider. Uh, same way, when I uh, develop the code for Azure, uh, when I develop the code for GCP, the respective cloud uh, provider name, right, I need to pass. Uh, only then, when I give Terraform init, right, the respective component from the Terraform provider or things or stuff, it will be get uh, downloaded. Okay. Uh, mostly, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, so by providing the provider information only, by Terraform will keep to know for which platform this code is going to execute. So that way, uh, Terraform provider uh, play a major role. Okay. Uh, give the Terraform configuration for creating a single EC2 instance on AWS. Uh, uh, sorry, could you come again? Uh, okay, no problem. I will repeat. Uh, give the Terraform configuration for creating a single EC2 instance on AWS. Okay, you want me to explain the configuration for EC2 instance, right? Okay, so since it's you gave me a task to create a single resource, so I don't go for you no know, module now. I'll just tell you with the basic uh, example. Uh, I'll start the code, main that TF I'll create, where I need to specify the provider as discussed just before, I need to specify AWS. Uh, in the AWS itself, we'll have to specify the region. I'll parallelly create a variable that TF file. Uh, or there, I'll define variable, uh, some name, region, something like that. I'll define a default value, or you can even pass it at the time of uh, execution. Uh, after that, I'll create a resource. Uh, it is going to be instance, right? So it could be you know, AWS underscore uh, EC2 or AWS underscore instance should be there. After that, I'll define some user defined value. Uh, uh, we can even define like um, Santosh instance or something like that. Inside of curly process, right? The properties attributes will be coming in. Uh, for creating instances, right? We can even pass um, AMI ID, instance type, uh, key pair, and the security group, if you wanted to specify VPC or subnet ID, those kind of, you know, uh, important uh, uh, things, right, we can pass it through. Uh, just now I told you, right, these are the properties. These these attributes can be, uh, do not want to hard code it, since already we have a variable a TF file, over there we can define uh, for uh, AMI one variable, instance, uh, you know, type one variable, uh, key pair one variable. So where we can define it, in the main TF file, we need to specify like where dot, the respective variable name I need to give. So after that, we can go for Terraform minute. Yeah, before giving Terraform minute, we need to uh, update uh, with the proper uh, authentication principle. So once as soon as I have updated the authentication uh, properly, then I'll move on to Terraform minute. Uh, it will give you the plugin for getting updated. Then I'll give Terraform plan. 
Uh, so probably it will give me a sample output. If all everything looks uh, as I expected, then I'll jump for uh, Terraform Apply. Uh, by the way, resource gets created. There's a basic uh, syntax. Uh, after the resource, if everything looks good, I can even, if you want, we can add the value of uh, output uh, module. Uh, output, uh, I can generate uh, instance ID or something like that. Uh, also, I can specify some uh, local, okay, when I'm creating resources, right, the naming standard, the tag, I know, uh, those and all I can specify. So these are the way we can uh, fine tune it, make it as a better standard. If you are working on the bigger script like that, uh, next uh, standardization is all about going with the Terraform modules. So I'll keep the source code in my source code uh, management repository by where we can manage it. Uh, this is what pretty much. <laughs> Explain the recent project you have working in the Terraform. Okay, in my environment, you are asking? Yes. Okay, so coming to recent project, right? So many things we worked. Uh, you want a Terraform project or anything is fine? Terraform. Okay. So when come to Terraform related projects, right? Yes, I will tell you. So recently, uh, account onboarding. Okay, there is a process called account onboarding in AWS. A couple months before we did it, um, huge automation. Um, when somebody you know creates the account, starting from the uh, set of you know IAM custom policy creation, it will create some default defined uh, role. After that, it will create the uh, KMS encryption keys for each uh, region. Each region means we had uh, two uh, regions we are using. One is uh, uh, Singapore region, another one is uh, Tokyo region. Those two regions, it will use it. After that, it will enable the EBS encryption feature in the EC2 instance console level. Uh, followed by it will you know create some default security group we use some standard security group which required port need to be open that security group it will uh, uh, it will create it and they enable that feature yeah mainly it will create the uh, vpcs and stuff and subnets routable internet gateway uh no transit gateway related stuff uh, pairing the region i mean between two vpc to create the pairing internet gateway not gateway setup all those things it will set up and it will create the you know, s3 uh buckets okay for storing state file state file gets stored over there after that we'll create the cloud trial the end-to-end -end, uh, thing for uh, creating the end-to-end -end, uh, account setup right initially if somebody coming in a to z will be uh, created uh, from the uh, terraform uh, so uh, we, are, we are close to you know, six members are working on that uh, automation close to three months right we worked on it uh, we have delivered that automation to our customer so yeah i think uh, that is where uh, the project we worked on the terraform okay santosh all explanations are really good i will hand over the data to hr team uh, they will get back to you thank you okay thanks for your feedback yeah